What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a 5th generation Toyota 4Runner. I'm also going to show you how to swap out that plastic filter housing for a metal one. Right, the tools you're going to need for this job is a ratchet, extension, 10, 12, and 14 millimeter socket, your wrench for your filter housing, and if you're swapping out your filter housing to a metal one, you're going to need some channel locks and a screwdriver. First, you're going to want to jack up the vehicle or put it on some ramps. Next, you're going to want to remove the front skid plate. These are the bolts you're going to have to remove. One here, this one, two more here, and then the two in the back. The front two connecting the air damper, 10 millimeter. And at some foreigner models, this is not here, so this does not apply. The bolts holding the skid plate to the frame are 12 millimeter. Be careful removing the last bolt because the skid plate is then free and could swing and hit you. Then swing the skid plate down and unhook it from the two hooks on the front of the vehicle. This can sometimes be a real pain. Just behind the first skid plate there's a secondary skid plate and this is where the oil drain is. There's typically a plate over this area here but somehow, some way, this one was lost. So there's two 12 millimeters to release the small skid plate and then a 14 millimeter to release the oil drain plug itself. Once the oil is done draining, you then want to replace the drain plug with a new crush washer. Then tighten it down to 30 foot pounds. Then clean up any remaining oil residue and reinstall the plate with the two 12 millimeter bolts. Then underneath the skid plate that you removed, you're going to find the filter housing. And you can see in my case, this plastic filter housing is cracked in a couple spots, so it's time to replace it with a metal one. Some people like to remove this plug first and drain the oil out. Me, I just like to remove the whole filter housing itself and I use this filter wrench right here. It kind of grabs onto the ears of the filter housing. So you're just going to loosen that and drain off any excess oil from the filter housing itself. And you can see because the ears are broken on this housing, it kind of slips. And I'm taking it real easy here because I don't want anything else on this housing to break. In my opinion, this is a very poor design, so that's why I'm going to swap it out with a metal filter housing. Make sure you have a drain pan underneath the filter housing before it starts to drain out. And you can see here in a little more detail how those tabs are broken off in the top of the housing. Here's the replacement part right here. But remember, this is not a direct replacement. You have to do a little bit of modification first, but it's super easy. Just looking at this housing, it's far superior to what came off. This centerpiece right here needs to be swapped out. As you can see, comparing it to the old filter, the centerpiece is much longer than the old filter so we need to swap it out. To do this, you need to bend in that small retention tab in between those two ears there, and it should pop right out. Then remove the spring as well. Next, pop out the center portion of the old filter housing. Be very careful with this.
Then install it into the new filter housing. And be sure to bend that tab back down. Then just double check that the spring is functioning correctly and that the center portion cannot be twisted out. Next remove the end cap. You may need a set of channel locks and you also need a ratchet. Take that cap off. Then open up your new filter. You'll find the filter element itself. You can install this now. And then there will be a baggie with two rubber gaskets in it. The small one goes in the end cap. You'll need to install this in the end of the filter housing and then reinstall the little end cap. And just tighten this end cap until it bottoms out on the housing. Then take the larger o-ring, coat it with a little bit of oil, and install it onto the housing. Make sure this o-ring is in the correct spot. There's a slot that goes all the way around the housing that's smooth. Make sure it's in here. Do not put it in the threads. Then reinstall the whole filter housing back into the vehicle. Then tighten down the housing using your filter wrench and be careful not to over tighten this. Just tighten it until it bottoms out. Then reinstall your skin plate. Now it's time to add oil. Just make sure you use the recommended oil weight of 0W20. Then remove your oil filler cap, and you can see on the cap it says 0W20. And I like to use this Motive X funnel here that's made for Toyota. I'll leave a link for this down below in the description. And then what I like to do is on the oil bottle itself, I have the full 5 quarts in that one, and then I have 1.6 in here for a total of 6.6. .6. Then you're just going to fill it up with the 6.6 .6 quarts. Then remove the funnel, reinstall the filler cap, and now it's time to check the oil level. And what I like to do is I do one check before I start up the engine, then start it up and check one more time just to be sure. And I made a video on how to reset this maintenance required light, so I'll leave a link up above here. And that's it. Do one more check and you're all set. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Also check out all my other 4Runner maintenance videos, as well as my other videos. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And just a reminder, I'll leave a link to all the tools used in this video in the description below.